Okay, so the whole idea of this video is to kind of understand what's going on with the roots of a quadratic equation and its actual equation, what it looks like. There's definitely a pattern going on. So if you remember, we looked at a lot of different equations in class, and we noticed that when you add your roots, so if I add 3 and negative 6, I get negative 3. Well, okay, that number shows up here. It's just always the opposite sign. Now, if I multiply them... I get negative 18, and oh, look, that actually shows up exactly right here. Okay, so that's kind of cool. When fractions are involved, I try the same pattern. So if I do 2 thirds plus negative 1, that, you know, you could do that in your calculator or in your head, that should give you negative 1 third, which, okay, I don't quite see the same pattern yet, but I do have a 1 here with a different sign. So that's certainly sort of like what I had before. When I multiply 2 thirds and negative 1, I get negative 2 thirds. And again, okay, there's that negative 2. It seems like all of a sudden, now that I have fractions involved, this bottom number is correlating with my A value or my lead coefficient. That wasn't really an issue back here because my A value was just 1. So we can actually generalize this to work for all equations. Again, I could show you these all night, but I want to keep this short. So in general, the sum of the roots of a quadratic equation is always going to be equal to negative b over a. Now remember, when I talk about those three letters, I'm talking about a regular trinomial quadratic equation. Your a is your first coefficient, b is your second, and c is your third. So those are the numbers that we're talking about. And your product is always equal to c over a. Now again, the reason we brought in that negative sign on the sum formula is because we saw that those signs were always changing on that middle number. So we indicate that algebraically with a negative sign. So these are the two formulas that can really help you out as you work on different problems that have to do with writing an equation from its roots or something of that nature. Okay, so let's look at some other examples. Here's just kind of a basic example. It just gives you a quadratic equation all set up and says find the sum and product of the roots. Okay, well remember we just wrote those formulas down, the sum is always negative b over a, just meaning that once we divide those numbers, we have to change our sign, and the product is c over a. Okay, so if we look at our a, b, and c, our sum in this case is, if I negate negative 6, that actually turns into a positive 6, and my a is 4. I could leave it like that or simplify that down to 3 over 2. Which, again, if this was something like a multiple choice question, you would most likely have your choices in simplified form. So my sum is 3 over 2. My product, I take C, which is 1, and just stack it over A, and I get 1 fourth. Can't simplify that. So that's my sum and product of my roots. Just really basic, really just putting these formulas to use. So kind of working backwards from what we did before. Okay. Um, now, I kind of a more common question is if I give you roots and you have to come up with a quadratic equation. So think about that pattern that we were using before. Since these are just whole numbers, if I add 5 and negative 7, their sum is negative 2. Well, negative 2, if we really want to look at that as a fraction, can just be written over 1. My product, if I multiply 5 and negative 7, I get negative 35. Again, if you really want to look at this as a fraction, I can write it over 1. That just means because I got these two ones, that my a value is 1, or my lead coefficient is 1. So that means my quadratic equation starts out with just plain old x squared. Since my sum was negative 2, remember I changed my sign, so this becomes positive 2x, and my product just gets plopped at the end. And I always add a plus 0 because it did ask me for an equation, so I can't just leave it as an expression. And that's my final answer. Okay, let's look at some fraction roots. Okay, same idea. Let's find the sum and the product, see if we can kind of work to get that whole equation. So if I add negative 3 over 2 plus 1 fourth, so you can go ahead if you're following along, put that in your calculator, math, frac, whatever you get, you should get negative 5 over 4. My product, if I multiply negative 3 over 2 and 1 fourth, you should get negative 3 eighths. Now, okay, this is sort of a problem because I want my two denominators in these fractions to be the same number because that's going to give me, remember, my a or my lead coefficient. Well, right now they're not the same. So I can kind of use like an old school method of converting a fraction into an equivalent form. I can easily turn this 5 over 4 into something out of 8 by just multiplying them both by 2. Okay, so this is the same as the fraction negative 10 
over 8. Now, all of a sudden, I do have equal denominators, which means that a is 8. That means this quadratic equation is going to start out with ax squared. Now the rest sort of falls into place. I have negative 10 on top, which means that in the middle of my equation, I'm going to have a positive 10. I always switch my sign. And then the negative 3 that's on the top of my product, that just gets tacked on at the end. And I'm equal to 0 again because they asked me for an equation. So this is my final answer. Okay, why don't we try one more? So here's an example where I'm actually only giving you, that's only one root. 4 minus radical 3 is one real expression. So we talked about this in class. If you get a root of 4 minus radical 3, that means you must have been completing the square, and the only other option is that the other root is 4 plus rad 3. So you can always assume in situations like this that the other root, if they're only giving you one like that, the other root is the conjugate, if you remember that word. Conjugate just means all you do is you change the sign in the middle. Okay, so now... Now that we know both, let's go ahead and find our sum. If I add 4 minus rad 3 and 4 plus rad 3, the rad 3s knock out and I just get 8. Again, since that's not a fraction, I can go ahead and assume that that's just over 1. My product, if I multiply 4 minus rad 3 and 4 plus rad 3, again, you can do that by hand or in your calculator, you should get 13. Again, since it's not a fraction, you can technically put it over 1. That's nice because that means that my a is 1 because those are my two denominators. So this equation starts out with plain old x squared. Since my sum is 8, I change my sign to make it negative 8x, and I add my product at the end. Equals 0, again, because it's an equation. And that's my final answer. So those are a couple of different things you can do just knowing that pattern between the sum and the product of roots and what the actual equation looks like.